Hi, I'm Novel Mike, and this is my opinion. This is going to be part one of a three-part series where I go over the big three, Sony, Microsoft, and Nintendo, and essentially uh, where they are currently in the industry, and with the new generation potentially going to be uh, sometime in the next two years or so, I figured now was a good time to really talk about where they're at, where I see them going forward, and really what to expect from them, and both what they're doing well and what they're really not doing well. Uh, so with that, let's start the first one with the current industry leader, Sony. There's no question Sony has done exceptionally well with the PlayStation this generation. Out of the gate, they did exceptionally well, and even now, I think the PS4 is still selling, outselling the Xbox One nearly 2 to 1, which is really crazy to think about, and I understand why they are exceptionally happy about that, but I also think that their success has made them more arrogant. Maybe not to the point of arrogance that they were at when the PS3 was coming out, when they really thought they were essentially just untouchable, but they're putting out statements about things like crossplay that really make them come off as exceptionally arrogant, and I'm afraid these are the kind of things that are going to bite them in the ass if they aren't careful. And maybe they feel like because the crossplay thing hasn't really affected them that much as of yet that they can just keep touting this idea that they don't need to enable it because they're the industry leader but i think that it is something that shows that they are not willing to compromise and do something that is consumer friendly when they were doing those kind of things at the start of this generation when the you know microsoft was really saying use games were essentially going to be not working the same as they normally do on current systems. I don't remember exactly what they said and stuff like that. And Sony came out and said, you know, they're this big old thing. You can play used games. Here's how you loan a game to a friend. And they just hand them the game instead of this thing where Microsoft seemed to be pushing towards an alternative where you're going to have to pay licensing fees and stuff like that. But anyway, not about that. But the point is, is that Sony was humble at the time now they are not being very humble, and it's more than just that. With backwards compatibility, you know, they've got PlayStation Now, but it's, uh... Lackluster isn't even the word. It's not good. <laughs> and they want you to pay a subscription for it. I know some people have said that it works okay, but it requires you to have good internet, and even then there's still input lag. And as long as that exists, that is not an optimal way to play many of these games. I think that they have invested a lot of money into this company and the service and they just don't want to admit that it isn't as good as they want it to be and the technology just isn't really there for it yet. Along with that too is you've got things like uh, them not willing to do refunds on PSN and not letting, allowing you to change your name on PSN. The latter of which is something people have been asking for since the PS3's early days and it is crazy to me that after more than a decade now, they still don't have that feature available. And it's ignoring fans about those kind of things, or just saying, okay, maybe eventually, and then never actually doing it, is what really is going to, I think, sour a lot of people on Sony going forward, because I feel like that because they've had so much success, they feel essentially that they really don't need to do anything besides come out with continuously good games, in order to do well and that may not be the case especially if microsoft can start matching their output which them buying a lot of studios could potentially do so i don't really want to make this about microsoft but that is a sort of my counterpoint to sony is that they are taking microsoft now not what microsoft is really doing and investing in and if they can't match that and they continue to act arrogant i think they could basically have their feet kicked out from under them. Now that said, Sony's game output is insanely good. You know, they've already had games that I would consider games of the generation like Bloodborne come out. God of War could be considered right up there with this latest one. Maybe not for everybody, but that is a really good game. Uh, you've got still Last of Us 2, Death Stranding on the horizon sometime next year. Days Gone doesn't look super good, but you know, a lot of people thought the same thing about Horizon Zero Dawn and then that came out and it was a lot better than a lot of people expected so that could still happen with that game. 
and they've had even titles that people weren't insanely into at first like until dawn people played and you know word of mouth got around and that was such a good seller even games that you know people didn't love like beyond two souls are still selling insanely well for them or not beyond two souls uh <laughs> oh god what was the, the the newer david cage game i can't remember the name right now it just came out this year detroit that's it detroit sorry but like you even games like that that fans and critics are not receiving super well are still selling well and they continue to keep showing that they do have potential output of those high quality tiles going into 2019 i would assume 2020 as well if we're not getting a ps5 next or next year which I, again i don't think we are i think it's gonna be 2020 so it's because of that that i think sony is doing exceptionally well i think that and being so successful especially in the west has really made a lot of developers see PlayStation as the primary platform they should be publishing games on, especially games out of Japan. I don't think Microsoft has any established support for the Xbox One in Japan anymore, and so developers are essentially just looking at either the Switch or the PlayStation 4, and the Switch just came out last year. Before that, it was Wii U, and that wasn't doing well, so Sony got a lot of games exclusive to their system kind of just by default. And if that situation changes, especially with the rise of the Switch, Sony could be looking at a, lot, a rather harder fought battle than they had this generation when their other competitors weren't floundering so much. And to show arrogance now is doing a disservice as you are leading up to the launch of a potentially new system in the next couple years. You want people to be hyped and amazed about what you're going to be doing. And if you're just acting arrogant that's really going to bring people down and that's not what you want to be doing so they need to get over that and they need to start really being more humble and sure be happy about how well you're doing but don't deny things like crossplay just because you feel that you are the industry leader and that you don't need to just because you're industry the industry leader does not give you a right to just do whatever you want that's exactly what you thought about the ps3 and that's why you had to completely change everything about that and lose millions of dollars because you were just arrogant about it. Don't make the same mistake, Sony. Come on. Besides that, you know, we've heard some things about what Microsoft is doing rumor-wise with the next generation. You know, we know what Nintendo's currently doing with the Switch. I really don't know what to expect from a PlayStation 5. I don't know if they're going to go the Microsoft route and go more towards a digital future, possibly. I don't know if they're going to be like Nintendo and maybe try to incorporate some kind of handheld device and more do a hybrid system. I don't know if maybe they're just going to make an, a much more powerful PS4 that is, you know, got new bells and whistles and everything like the PS3 that the PS4 did, but is just a stronger PlayStation, essentially, and still just a home console. I don't know if things are really going to be that different. And there's other things to think about, too, but Sony just has not talked about much on what really we could technically expect from them in this next generation. Almost all their press conferences have been very much about games, and while that's good for stuff like E3 for building hype, at some point you do want to have start having the conversation. You know, this is kind of what we're thinking about doing for the next generation. And are they going to have big surprises? I hope so, but that remains to be seen. I think that they're a very they're in a very interesting place where they could completely have the their feet knocked out from under them if they aren't careful. But at the same time their established ips and what they've currently got is very strong that maybe that is all they need going forward even with their arrogance i hope that's not the case i hope at the very least they are able to be more humble but that remains to be seen next time we will talk about nintendo but for now that's all i have to say about sony i'm novel mike thank you all for listening have a great day and i'll see you next time